Hey everyone, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Works. Today is the day. Today is a great day for annoying people like myself because today is the official announcement of the International Booker Prize 2024 shortlist. As you know, I'm not only an International Booker Prize super fan. I also, very excitingly, am hosting this year's International Booker Prize official live stream. <laughs> like, the scream, I scream every time I think about that. Like, I'm just so buzzing. I got to host the Booker Prize last November, the live stream, and I was so grateful and honoured when they asked me back to do the International Booker Prize as well. So that will be on May 21st. I'll be bringing you all of the behind the scenes of the award ceremony from the room where it happens, getting to interview the authors and some guests and some judges perhaps, and it's going to be a really, really special show and probably the best day of my life. So <laughs> um, if you want to tune into that, it will be over on my main channel, live streaming. It will also be on the Booker Prize channel and and anyway, all this to say, a month ago we got the long list and I've been working my way through as many of the books as I can. I think I've read roughly half, just over half of the long list. But with that in mind and having also been keeping tabs on other people's reviews and the kind of general consensus and commentary, today I wanted to predict the books that I think will be on the International Booker Prize shortlist and then I think in 10 minutes it's gonna be announced, so I will check and we'll see if I'm correct. So, these are the books that I think will be on the International Booker Prize shortlist. Four of them I've read, one of them I haven't, but this is based on the overwhelming number of reviews I've read where people have been like, this is a winner, this is a great book. So, we'll start with that one um, before I get onto the books that I have read. So, that book is Lost on Me. This is by Veronica Ramo. It is translated from the Italian by Lea Genexco, and everyone I know who has read this book has been absolutely enthralled by it and mesmerized by it. Narrated in a voice as wryly ironic as it is warm and affectionate, Lost on Me seductively explores the slippery relationship between deceitfulness and creativity. Deceptively simple, its tenderness offset by moments of core brutality, Lost on Me is a masterwork of human observation. This sounds really up my street because I love books that consider the human condition, so I'm predicting that this could end up on the shortlist. But these are my favourite four books that I've read so far. Out of the books that I have read, these are the four that I think deserve a place on the shortlist. I really, really like these books. Firstly, we have Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. Kairos is a love story set before, during and after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And it is written so gorgeously. There are so many lines in here that just, I felt like I was weightless. I felt like I was floating above this book because it's just so gorgeous and captivating. I felt like I was there with these two people as they're falling in love. The way that they think about each other, the way that we can see in both of their heads, the microscopic level of detail, the, the really granular stuff is so beautiful. You will not be able to stop thinking about this book after you finish reading it. I love Kairos. And this is translated from the German by Michael Hoffman. This I really, really, really want to see on that shortlist. Then we have The Details by Aya Genberg. This was such an easy five star for me. It does what it says on the tin. It is all about the details. Details. It's kind of fragmented. It's about four people in this one woman's life. I think it really plays on the idea of, have you read that theory that you are the exact average of the five people closest to you in your life? Like you are the sum of those people divided by five. I think it kind of plays on that idea. And through learning about these four people in her life, we actually learn a lot about her. There's a line in the blurb that I thought about a lot whilst reading this. I think it's so accurate. It says, who is the real subject of a portrait, the person being painted or the one holding the brush? I think that sums up this book so perfectly. I mean, it is the blurb, that is its job, but that really is the question at the core of this book. You know, do we learn more about the four people who are being depicted or do we learn more about the person describing them? Of course, it's a little bit of both, but again, for me, what I really loved about this was the level of attention to detail. It's insane, down to turning up at a party and knowing that you'll know if your friend is there because her shoes will be propped on a shoe rack, whereas everyone else's shoes will be in a muddle on the floor. I just really felt like this captured the heart and soul of those people in very fair ways. They felt like they just jumped off the page. I, I really love this book. And if I could write like this, I would be a very, very happy person. And this is translated from the Swedish by Kira Josephson. Next, we have Undiscovered. This is by Gabriela Weiner and translated from the Spanish by Julia Sanchez. This is a book that 
opens in a gallery space, like a museum. It's about a Peruvian woman who actually, on one side of her family, descends from a colonizer. And it's kind of about the way that she grapples with that kind of heritage, but also her relationship to her father, who dies right at the beginning of the book. That's not a spoiler, it happens in the first like <laughs> three chapters. It's about desire and racism and colonialism. It is so fascinating and deeply, deeply textured. Experimental, I guess, or innovative in the way that it blends fiction and non-fiction. So I really liked this book and I would love to see it on the shortlist because I think it does something very special and is kind of a perfect book for the International Booker Prize. And now I think my favourite book that I read on the long list, I think it's got to be the Polish book translated by Kate Webster, written by Ursula Honeck. This is White Knights. Now, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me because I've also been raving this year about White Knights by Dostoevsky. I fully appreciate that it's very confusing that I'm gonna be shouting from the rooftops about two different books called White Knights. Like if I had a nickel <laughs> for every time I loved a book called White Knights this year, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. This book is so brilliant. Like absolutely spellbindingly brilliant. It's a short story collection and I would say that the common thread throughout the stories is grief and death and mortality. There are various misfortunes and tragedies that impact different people throughout these stories but they're also all inter interconnected and of course the antithesis of death is survival and I think that that's really also one of the core themes of this book. It's like how do we survive in the face of death with the awareness of death when threatened by death? You know, I also would say that all of these short stories are very satisfying. Like, they're, to me, all the perfect length, you know, they're not superfluous, they don't overwrite or underwrite, each one is like perfectly written, not a word is wasted, they're the right amount of detail, they're also very satisfying in the sense that each one kind of does feel tied up with a neat bow. To me, this book is just masterfully done and I will kill someone. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I will be very mad if this is not on the shortlist, but we'll see. It might be time to find out. Okay, it's coming out in the next 30 seconds. Let's see. There is also, I should point out, a reading challenge or kind of like reading guide on the Booker Prize website. So you can actually um, find samples from each of the books, author interviews, reading guides for each one, like questions you should be asking as you read them, which are very, very useful and a good guiding light, I suppose, to help you um, work your way through these books. I find it so useful hearing insights from the authors, etc. Oh my gosh, we have it. We have the shortlist. <gasps> oh, okay. Firstly, we have Not A River. I have read this one. I, okay, interesting. I felt like this was a real slow burn. It took me a while to get into this book. It's by Salva Almada, translated by Annie McDermott from the Spanish, I believe. Yeah. It's basically about these three men who go out fishing and they return to a place where something tragic has previously happened to them. And it kind of takes place over the course of a day and they have to revisit the ghosts of their past. This is a really interesting choice. I did like this book. This is one of those books where after I finished it, I appreciated it as a piece of art, but my actual reading experience was tough. You know, it's weird because it's actually not a long book. It's less than 100 pages, but I found it such a slog to get through. I do remember there being some really lovely quotes in here though. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so I did not get a full house, although I am realizing that there are going to be six on the shortlist, not five, and I predicted five. So is it too late to pretend that I predicted this one as well? <laughs> I've got the rest of the books in front of me. If I were to predict book six. Maybe I'd go for Crooked Plow. This is by Itamar Vieira Jr. It's translated by Johnny Lorenz. And I haven't read this book yet, but I have heard a lot of people raving about it. And I also really rate Verso books. And um, sometimes, you know, with the publishers, they're kind of like a stamp of approval on books. You know, if you're like, oh, Verso published this, then it must be good because Verso consistently publish really interesting books. So I would be unsurprised, shall we say, to see Crooked Plow on the shortlist, but like I say, I haven't read it yet, so I can't give it my stamp of approval yet, but um, I've heard a lot of good things. So we'll see, okay, let's carry on. Oh, yay, okay, we have Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. Oh, I'm buzzing to see that one on the shortlist. That is so well deserved. Very, very happy to see this one get the recognition. I was worried it wouldn't because it is kind of just about romance and love and communication. And I sometimes wonder if the books like that are overlooked for more politically charged books, but really, really happy to see this one on the shortlist. Yay, I'm on a high. Oh, I got the details. Yes, the details has also made it on 
onto the shortlist. Two out of six so far. This is going pretty well and so deserving. This book is just magical. Oh, I'm buzzing. Next one. By the way, I'm watching someone like pull them out of a bookshelf. Oh, Meta 210. Okay, I have that over here. This is by Huang Sok Yong, translated from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell and Young Jae Josephine Bay. This is a mammoth of a book. It's absolutely huge. Haven't read this one yet. It's set in contemporary Seoul. A laid off worker stages a month long sit in atop a 16 story factory chimney. During the long and lonely nights, he talks to his ancestors chewing on the meaning of life, on wisdom passed down the generations. A true voice of a generation, Huang shows again why he is unmatched when it comes to depicting the roots and reality of a divided nation and bringing to life the trials and tribulations of the Korean people. I mean, I've just spent a month in Korea. I'm very, very pleased to see a Korean book make the shortlist. So yeah, I'm excited to read this one. I'm worried about white knights now. The next one is, ah, Crooked Plow. Okay. I feel like I kind of cheated because I did add this one. This was number six that I added to my predictions, but that was just because I was being stupid and I'd only picked out five books. So <laughs> Cricket Plow is on the shortlist. This is described as the most important Brazilian novel of the century so far. This bestseller's unique blend of magical and social realism has won it three literary awards and global acclaim. It's about the lives of subsistence farmers in Brazil's poorest region. Three generations after the abolition of slavery it is at once fantastic and realist, encompassing themes of family, spirituality, and political struggle. That does have like winning material in it. That feels like it could be a winner, but we will see. I think this might be the next book that I read because obviously now I'll be prioritizing the shortlisted books. Okay, interesting. There's only one spot left. <gasps> what I'd rather not think about. White Knights didn't make it. What? What I'd rather not think about. I did like this one, but it wasn't in my top choices. Anyway, this is a book about two twins obviously two twins, obviously there are two of them, they're twins, <laughs> but they're a brother and a sister and the brother commits suicide. And so the sister is having to grapple with the fact that the person she has shared pretty much every experience with has decided not to live. And she is having to work out how she can survive given her new context. And also about how this sort of permeates every aspect of her life. So she starts to consider grief in every action that she participates in, whether that's just sitting down and watching survival or riding her bike, you know? So this is a really interesting choice. I'm surprised by this, but cool. It's by Genta Postuma and Sarah Timmer Harvey. So that is what I'd rather not think about. I can't believe White Knights, my baby, my favorite, didn't make the shortlist. This one was a complete guess because I hadn't read it, but this one I'm also surprised not to see making the shortlist. Maybe it just didn't match up to the others, but oh my god, White Knights, I'm devastated. This book is about mourning and grief, and I am mourning and grieving the fact that this did not make the shortlist. Oh no! I love this book so much. Wow. Well, maybe I'm not so good at this after all. Last year I did predict the winner of the Booker Prize though, so I'm holding out hope that I still I've still got it in me. I have four of these books left to read. Two of them I have already read and really enjoyed. A lot of the books that I immediately picked out from the long list to read didn't make it onto the short list. So obviously my intuition is not so good, but also um, at least you know it's not rigged. At least you can tell that I did not know who was gonna be on this short list. So yeah, these are the books on the International Booker Prize short list. Let me know which one you're gonna be reading first. Have you read them all? How do you feel about this short list? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I'll see you on May 21st for the International Booker Prize live stream. Ah, so exciting. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I love ya, goodbye.